Ahoy, web friends. I'm Jeremy Elborn, tech lead for Angular, and I am sincerely excited to show off a brand new feature we're releasing in Angular v15, the Directive Composition API. Angular devs have long wanted a way to reuse behaviors from directives without those directives showing up in the public API of their components. This has been one of our most requested features on GitHub, and it was even in my own personal top five feature requests. To show off this new feature, let's go through a scenario. Let's say I work on an app called Quality Xylophones. The designer on my team has come up with a new design for menus in our app, and I need to build a new component for them. They've even helpfully already written the CSS for me. We can start by adding a couple of components for our menu and menu item. Normally, we'd jump deep into coding out the menu functionality now. Instead, though, we can use the Directive Composition API to pull in behaviors we need from Angular CDK. To use the new API, we add a host directives property to our components, bringing in CDK menu and CDK menu item. This will apply these directives to the host element of these components. We can try out components in the template now. Note that there's no sign of anything CDK related in the API here. If we run our application and look at the rendered DOM, we get something like this. You can see that the CDK directives have applied a number of CSS classes and attributes, so we know that the directives have been applied. We can also navigate the menu with our keyboard. It works! The design I'm building also includes a disabled state for the menu items. I know that CDK menu item already has an input for this, so now I can update my host directives property and expose a disabled input as part of the menu items API. You can see we've refactored the entry in host directives so that we can specify the inputs property. This lets us use an alias on one of the CDK menu items inputs to be included in QX menu's public API. In this case, we're aliasing the verbose CDK menu item disabled to the much shorter disabled. With this in place, we can now bind the disabled input on a menu item. You can alias any number of inputs and outputs from directives you apply in the host directives property to create a fully custom API while still delegating behavior to the composed directives. Now, I've got a functional menu now, but I need to change it from being an inline menu to a pop-up menu. So let's take what we've covered so far and apply that to finish up. I'll introduce a new component for my menu trigger. This component uses CDK menu trigger in host directives and aliases the input CDK menu trigger for to panel. Notice here that I can also use the host directives property on a directive in addition to a component. Now I'll go back to the template and add my new menu trigger. To connect the menu trigger to the menu pop-up, I put the menu inside of an ng template and declare the template variable called pop-up. And with all of that, I can hop back to my running demo and see the whole menu in action. I can click the menu trigger and get a fully functional pop-up menu. By using the Directive Composition API, along with the CDK menu primitive, we have a pop-up menu that does everything we need, including setting all of the right attributes for accessibility. By adding and configuring a few host directives, we didn't even need to write a single line of JavaScript. And because it was so easy, I won't mind when the designer comes back next month with a new design. Now that you've seen what it can do, go try it out and let us know what you think.